up guys welcome back to my channel beautiful gaming mess and this live stream i am playing doki doki literature club episode two and we shall start right out i tried to see if i could play as a girl but apparently you can't <laughs> i'm gonna pick words that i like treasure Daydream. Uh, journey. Marshmallow. Mm, let's do prayers. Silly. Fireflies. I'm getting a lot for her. <laughs> um. Parfait. Yeah, yeah. Dance. Ooh, there's a lot of good ones on this one. I'm gonna do dance. Imagination. <laughs> I like this music, though. Cute. I knew it was gonna be her. Um. Sing. Sunset, bliss, shopping, eternity. A one. A landscape. Fantasy, calm, or partay. Let's do fantasy. Mm, mm, mm. Bubbles. Ribbon. Advent oh, I like adventure. Excitement, fireworks. Ooh, I think I'm gonna do dream. Getting, I, I feel bad I forgot their name. Um, it's been a while since I played this. Sugar, Destiny. Uh, sugar. <laughs> Why not? Sparkle? Yes. Bunny? Or a puppy? We're gonna do a puppy. Alright. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entertain, entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Sayori, I knew that was her name. Hi, Icarus! Yo, Sayori. <laughs> Why do I have to say that? <laughs> Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just not... I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple- oh, that's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. What? Let's go! <laughs> that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look around, look at your purse, Sayori? What? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. What the hell is wrong with you? Sorry, Sayori <laughs> nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the content lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. She's a smart one. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. What? I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Yuri. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. I wasn't listening to you or anything. It was just something in my... Oh, I just spit. Jesus. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Icarus to let me borrow some money. That's... 
Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. <laughs> Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. <laughs> Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Nasuki into making them. Come on, uh, come on, give me one, give me, <laughs> give me more credit than that, Sayori. Ooh, did I just slap her? Out of, oh, I thought I slapped her. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What, the, what was, huh? A cookie? Sure enough, a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. So... <laughs> Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcake. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Natsuki! That was so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. <laughs> Just eat it. And Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! <laughs> mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki take Natsuki. Natsuki. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, oh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why'd you think I gave you that one? Fine. I'll, I'm still really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Aw, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in one hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Hmm. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Mm-hmm. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably... She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she... She has a... <gasps> ah, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined, but... Eh, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Huh? Monica cho chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. boyfriend What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track- I kind of just lost, lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played piano. P <laughs> Gosh, I can't talk. I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. 
Uh, I don't... I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds... Oh, that sounds cool. I keep forgetting. I'm, like, supposed to be the cool kid. The cool dude. I also look forward to it. Is that cool enough? <laughs> Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Icarus. Monica smiled sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I did... And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... Not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapades. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappears into the closet. Why is she in the closet? Icarus! Icarus! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Are you going with Icarus to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble, your trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, oh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Icarus? Yep. Let's go. Here we go. Walking down the hallway. Oh, this music is upbeat. Oh. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> they sure do laugh a lot. Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, uh, that sounds kind of dull. Icarus, you're not thinking about it the right, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say, like you say the lines of the poem, like between my feet, the last remaining flowers beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moments between my fingers. <laughs> if that's how you caress a flower. But to what end have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. <laughs> Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Oh, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. Uh, I know, I know. It just means that it's pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Ah, don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited! The festival's going to be so much fun! Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey Icarus, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, huh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hole myself up in my room more and more. So going and venturing with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. I have a feeling that this is going to get dark super fast. Crayons! <laughs> Crayons! 
Sayori pulls a box of box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too, Crayola. They're kind of dirty though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. All right, that's one down. Don't forget, don't get distracted. We still need to find. Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster papers. Oh, I dropped one by accident. Oh, what the hell? Sarah bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. Goodness gracious. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Aw. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Gee, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting down on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. <laughs> Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's going to swell up. I should find you some ice. Icarus, where would I even find ice around this time? Where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink will do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sari makes a silly joke. Oh, what are you saying? What are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Oh, okay. Don't leave her alone. It's a quiet room. I need to vent. <laughs> Something's gonna happen. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out to the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. Oh, I thought she was going to be gone. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. What was that? At least we're already in the wrong spot before I... Wait. <laughs> At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. It looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Icarus, this kind of reminds me of growing up, doesn't it? Oh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. <laughs> like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. This is just like an anime. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. Oh, did she just blink? Uh, you would really try hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Icarus, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. <sighs> even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. Excuse me. You're, re you're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right, Icarus. <laughs> I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no... Oh, if I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll end up... Well, uh, there's no telling where we'll end 
each end up for college or after that, so it wouldn't be fair to, for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Siri has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. <laughs> Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sari hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Oh, I thought she was being happy. Don't stand up too fast after hurting yourself. You... Or, uh... <laughs> well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sari out of the classroom. Sari plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back! Good timing. I was just about to start with sharing our home. Uh, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. That's the look I think that he's doing when I see the three dots. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh. I have it right. Uh, Sayori frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Icarus. Ah, well, Sayori... I failed to come up with any excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure! Yeah, that. Ah, okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working, working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poem? I guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box closed tightly, I return to my seat. Which poem should I read first? Let's do Sayori's. Icarus, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Oh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's, and this one's too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the one who feels that way, so... Huh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Huh? What? Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're really, really... Ex you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let's not talk about that. Mm. So yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Huh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you? Why is he so mean? I pat Sayori's head. Hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Icarus, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well... It's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. Ugh, are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah, I broke my pencil. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. Sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sari clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sari's arm and help her at her desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. 
Oh, good lord. Good lord, why is that one... Bottles, I pop off my... Scalp? Huh? I pop off my scalp? Like the lid of a cookie jar. That's creepy. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. row. My collection makes me... Lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. After night, night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shel shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in comes my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frank frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. We're supposed to, supposed to be there for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something... But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. What the hell? There's something going on with her that she's not letting on. Holy crap, Terry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. Oof. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. Even if it helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sari's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Yeesh, that was, I was not expecting that from her. Let's do... Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Mm, well done, Icarus. Your skills are already improving. Oh, that's Yuri talking. <laughs> really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Huh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. You know, you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid of a... You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Oh, oh, we don't want to hear me. Okay. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course! Is the poem you wrote, is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me your poem. <laughs> the raccoon! It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. Bread for a guilty snack, really? Uh, my attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the con consequences, wait, 
well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon, that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increment, inc the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry and more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian pal conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feel myself again. Is she talking about what I think she's talking about? Oh, <laughs> I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. <laughs> it's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imaginary and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take, at, take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express m the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those- oh my god! <laughs> it's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing and people will make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Icarus? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. Or, I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities, even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. I don't know if I like that poem. Alright, Natsuki, what do you got for me? Hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this was one of your- if this was as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. Come to think of it, it's kind- it kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be one in the same way. You might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all... Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away letting go of a balloon. You could say we take- we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. That's her problem. Amy likes spiders. <laughs> you know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound for the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands were probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Rude. <laughs> not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday. Yesterday's was way too short. It was just warm. I was just warming up. 
I hope you didn't think that I would that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how it's about how everyone thinks my... Oh, that doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Scared me. It has now become a mukbang, mukbang. Sada pizza. That one guy at the lunch table. That is a long name. What is up? <laughs> I just got some food. You're at the hospital. Well, I'm glad I can entertain you. Hospitals are definitely boring. But all right, back to my game. Something that's something that you're afraid of if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh. That's funny. Yuri wrote something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Uh, excuse me. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding her words. I guess I should try not to be mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff... Excuse me! I have the hiccup. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I should say so. Even if her writing style is different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. All right. Last but not least, it is Monica. If I don't choke. Hi again, Icarus. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. What are you doing at the hospital? I hope everything's okay. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. I wouldn't count on that. You you never know. I want to share what you wrote. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. She's reading, she's reading, she's reading, she's reading, she's reading. All right, that's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. Now that's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but you do spend a lot of time with her in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just, <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them, give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. It's just I'm getting used to... I'm, I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, all right. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. 
green, blue, and endless a a cacophony cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise that won't it won't stop. Violent grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. I don't like that poem. <laughs> Oh, hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's not creepy. <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, Monica. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading about each other's poems, right? I have the ex- I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, don't, don't we, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll, ju we'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparation. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite it during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only one. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that the literature club is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes, if it takes, if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. 
the least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but it looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. <gasps> Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica! This is too sudden! Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry, it's I'll, I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see, Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. And then she stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly After I Eat Another Bite of Pizza. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. This is something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. She already looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Yuri? I'll go next. What? Ah! Yuri's, all, Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keep me your head down. She walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri, Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happened when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns, and, it and in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds up the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. That was... Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called My Meadow. Uh, uh -huh. sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out in the, the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sarah begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. <coughs> the poem isn't aimlessly cheery as Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read... If I were to read this on a on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But then hear but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Meaning. Mm 
Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Icarus liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does it mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. I didn't read what that said. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that uh, but it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where at some where that some where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> Then next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now who's next? Natsuki? Hm. Don't make me go before Icarus. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Icarus lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me. And I feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry, it's about, don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right then. It just leaves. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out her gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called. It's called. Why are you out looking at me? Because you're presenting. Huh. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's a, while she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it, just like this music. Oh, hmm. Ow, my neck. <laughs> it's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I mean, I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That doesn't surprise Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah. Uh, oh, ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Oh, ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make this such... such <laughs> don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? 
It's okay, Chris. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. <laughs> Walking home. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... I would walk home with Yuri. I would still walk home with Sayori. I'd walk home with Sayori. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Huh? But she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Icarus. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about, but I wanted to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time? Hmm. Time for some. Gotta write a poem. So I'm I'm supposed to do it to appeal to one of these. I'm just what I'm gonna do is appeal to what I like. I'm going from there. Like daydreaming. I daydream a lot. Family, disarray, whistle, universe, suicide, I ain't choosing that. Um Let's do breathe. Climax, broken, roll and party, nature. Sweet love nature. Memories, electricity, friends, passion, captive, childhood. Do friends. Treasures, secretive, pleasure, candy, papa, and chocolate. Mmm. Candy. Warm, extreme, nightgown, skipping, play. Mm. Game. Well, oh, game. Yeah. Mm. Fantasy. Grief, color, sing, bouncy, bubbles, crimson, infallible, dance, summer, jumpy. Hmm. I think in that case I would do dance. Yes. Lollipop. Vivacious. Hope. Doki Doki. Heaven sent swimsuit empty agonizing vanilla special. Special. Ooh, strawberry, because strawberry's my favorite. Mmm, to flower. Sugar sensation, adventure, comfort, clumsy, bliss, glee, entropy, explode, tears. Adventure. Ooh, milk. <laughs> I love milk. Let's do that one. Kitty! Rainbow, heaven. Mmm, rainbow. Imagination, boop. Boop, boop. Smile. Ooh, marshmallow. Let's see how this goes. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked into. Were you practicing the piano again? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that club? 
Remember, that club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too! I can't wait for the festival. This is going to be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah, but I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school that we're going to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Ooh, fried squid is good! That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Eh? I didn't say I didn't. I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you, by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. Huh? Monica. That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. I have no idea what they're talking about. Oh, never mind. Let's just focus on our new, our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Shayori's anyway. Excuse me. Um, excuse me, where's Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Ah, I'm sorry. Don't mind me. You can talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Ha! Ah! Uh, Sayori said that, not me. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glanced at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation already dispersed with everyone back. With everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Icarus, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little, into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Icarus. No, uh-uh. Huh? I read that wrong. <laughs> you certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, it's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try and talk to her myself. Are you sure about that? It seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Icarus. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much. Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Ah! She's been doing... She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it... It always has been. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're so funny, Icarus. Have you thought that maybe you've only seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know, anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to forget her words out of my head. Monica stands up in front of her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she keeps her voice so quiet that I can't hear her. 
I can't hear her myself. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Siri told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Okay, everyone. After some time, after some time passes, Monica calls. Oh. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Monica. Hi, Icarus. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of, a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hand. <laughs> it's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayori's poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't been seeing as much of her as this past year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me about Sayori's, about how Sayori's been a little off today. Yeah, did she tell you something? Uh, well, Icarus, you have been flirting with her, haven't you? You haven't been flirting with your with her, have you? Of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. Alright, just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her. So keep an eye on her. Sayori's been acting so much happier. Sayori's been acting so much happier ever since you joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? Well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Share a poem, okay. Uh, lady who knows everything. An old tale, tale, an old tale, tale, an old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. A lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am. Oh, a feather. Lost adrift to the sky, victim of the, cur the current wind. Day after day, I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist, but when all else fails me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twi twi sky. Twi twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall and I fall and I, I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumbs and forefingers. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her and find and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. That's depressing. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the best sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything. Phil philosophical or anything. But it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it almost it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, I wouldn't... Wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's something I notice. It seems like everyone in this club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are two-dimensional creatures. Creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional. Ah, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. 
Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid that it's not good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into, but if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will take you... It will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. You're welcome. Okay, let's go to story. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Icarus. No, thanks. Mm-hmm. Sarah, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything all right? Nah, huh? of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, all right. Hey, Icarus, I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end... Yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone. Don't you don't want to get closer to everyone else? Wait, of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me, and I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something, and this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when I'm when thinking about you. Sayori? No, Icarus. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori. I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori. Oh my god, how many times are you going to say her name? I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand your feel what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she, gather she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Icarus. Just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm going to I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, uh, humming to herself. Okay, I... I really wish that I could just follow her home, because I don't have a good feeling about that. Alright, let's do Yuri. I see. I think you're improving at writing in general, Icarus. But I can't help but feel a little bit foolish. What for? Just... I feel like I kept trying to offer advice when it should have been clear to me that you prefer a different writing style. I probably just sounded arrogant. I'm so stupid. Yuri, that's a little... No. You don't understand. I spent so much time worrying about what's better and what's worse. Not just with you. With Natsuki and Sayori, it's obvious now why nobody has fun when talking to me. And it's because of that. I'll just keep my mouth shut about your poem. Yuri buries her head in her arms on her desk. That's not the first time I've seen her do that. I don't think it's ever as bad as you make it sound in your head. I think if people really didn't like talking to you, then it would be a lot more obvious. I know you like to read deeply into things, but some things are just worth taking at face value. It just, I've gotten so used to it that it's hard for me to comprehend any other possibility. Gotten used to what? Reading deeply into things? Being disliked, oh whoops, I forgot, I didn't realize that was her talking. What, what am I saying? I'm so sorry, I never meant to bring this up. Yuri turns away from me. You should go. Huh? Please. Please don't look at me right now. I want to do some thinking. Are you sure? Yuri nods. All right. I leave Yuri be. Comforting or reassuring her is nearly impossible as it is. How <laughs> it is. So when she wants to be alone, I think anything I say can only make things worse. I feel bad, but thankfully she doesn't take it out on me. 
I'll wait until she's feeling a little bit better. Good lord, what is wrong with these people? Alright, Natsuki, your turn. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me and then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Uh, it's, is it that bad? No, no it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Uh, I was not, I wasn't supposed to. This wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My, my poem was are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously. You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you. You... Natsuki's face freezes like she just realized something. You... You're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time, then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I have to use the bathroom! Red-faced. Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Icarus, did you do something to Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No! I just told her that... My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm? Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She skins over it a second time, her smile not fading from her face. I see. At first I just thought you liked her writing style, but you wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I mean, not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Icarus? Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind, I'm just kidding. Ha <laughs> ha! I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey, Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hand. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Ugh! You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Huh? But Icarus wrote this poem. And we're supposed to share with everyone, right? Uh, Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Icarus is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Ugh! Never mind. <laughs> well, I guess Natsuki has my poem now. Not that I really plan on keeping it. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. I'll be your beach. <laughs> your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go, a shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sun, before the sunny glow. I'll be at the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be at the beach you daydream about each day. I'll be at the beach that makes your heart leap. In a way you thought you had, in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams, and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea, and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes the worries away. I'll be the beach. This sounds like a song. Uh, it, but if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Yeah, I felt like I kept writing negative things, so I wanted to write something nice, a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. It's kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first and then came up with the message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. I see. I don't really have much to contribute here since I didn't actually read Yuri's poem. <sighs> you can really you can really see her doing that too, making us write about a simple topic and then she's kind of trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too, but there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Okay, you three. We're done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did... 
Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from the usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're like your. <laughs> it seems you're right. Uh, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone, everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki realized. Natsuki, please show some decency. Where did I get the word realize from? Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously, of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Huh? That, curi that curious expression coming from Yuri of all people? Calm down, guys. I'll... I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can, uh... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? <laughs> I'm useless. No, it's, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never say gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case, but if I can't also be the leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere! Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that's just that just leaves you, Icarus. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give some of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would really appre be I would be really appreciative of that. Uh that's this Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you, give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you like to handle the baking on your own. Icarus may not like to be around if you make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Icarus to- What are you saying? It'll be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. Just what- Just what do you think- Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Icarus- Aw, oh, crap. To decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides- he hasn't really gotten a chance to spend any time with me yet, you know. So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said. I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah, Icarus, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. You know what? I'm going to spend it with Sayori, because I know something's wrong with her, but I'm probably going to regret that because it's going to make things worse, but I'm doing Sayori. I mean, if it isn't going to be, if it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we already are neighbors. But Monica said, Monica said that Sayori was helping her. 
Jeez, do you really hate us that much? No! Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Oh, okay, fine, you know what? I'm doing cupcakes. Well, baking sounds like it could be fun. And you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it probably could use two people. Don't worry, baking is a ton of fun, and you'll definitely agree. Huh? Just a minute, you were saying that... That's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. Oh, that's awkward. Well, that's good. Even though Yuri is being melodramatic, it's a little hard not to feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? Nope, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yes! Everything except the performance is going to be awesome. I don't think that really counts. What about you, Icarus? Me? I guess you could say that I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. <laughs> that Suki starts pouting too. It's not... I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it might not be just that. I think that Yuri might be just feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then nobody offering to help? That doesn't mean... Uh, Natsuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look, Natsuki goes over and puts her hand down on Yuri's shoulders. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here. And... And you're going to help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too, but you're going to make the atmosphere special. That'll be really important for the way that people feel during the performances. So, you need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. Natsuki releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? Um, no, not really, but <laughs> Yuri isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Natsuki's words. Natsuki, of all people, to be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. Natsuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best, and all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got to do any reading today, so... Fair enough, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. So I'm gonna call it quits for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I feel like something really bad is gonna happen soon. Uh, but hopefully not. Thank you for the new subscriber to my Twitch stream. You're awesome. I will give you a shout out next time that I am on. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful night. And have fun with your day. That was really bad. But okay, bye!